We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? Spirit of Prophecy tells us that the Sunday law is making its way in darkness. We'd like to welcome you to another last day event as they are being fulfilled right upon us. The Sunday movement has been making its way in darkness and this year we have been seeing its ugly head through the lockdowns and all of those draconian measures. We're going to be looking at something that has to do with the leaven of the papacy, which is the Sunday law. Let's pray. Loving Father our God, which art in heaven, we want to thank you again for inviting us at your feet to study the prophecies, looking at the signs of the times as they are being fulfilled. So help us to take heed. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus, in verse 33, was given another parable. He says in verse 33, Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leaven. For every truth of God, there is a counterfeit. Here Christ tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, that's yeast, that a woman put into a dough, mixed it up, and then it spreads throughout the whole dough. One more time, for every truth of God, there is a counterfeit. Now, I'm going to show you what the headline tells us here, a headline we're going to be looking at, how they describe the teaching of the papacy. Notice, let's go now to Galatians chapter 5. The book of Galatians, chapter 5. Again, Paul is dealing with the same idea that would be the leaven. Notice it says in Galatians, chapter 5, looking at verse 7. Galatians 5, let's back up to verse 4. He says, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, Wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That's verse 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Verse 8. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven, notice again, leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump indeed. Now I'm going to show you here this counterfeit there. Notice, this is from Review and Herald, April 25th, 1893, paragraph 8. Through his deceptive power, Satan made of none effect the fourth commandment, and men thought for doctrine, the commandments of men. Sunday, the child of the papacy, has been accepted and nourished and cherished by the religious world. They have looked upon Sunday as the Sabbath, the sanctified day of rest, when there is not a particle of scriptural evidence to justify the claim of this spurious Sabbath through the agency of the men of sin. Men have been led to exalt Sunday where the Sabbath of the Lord alone should be exalted. The Lord God of hosts is to be exalted and His law is to be honored. So what is this leaven of the papacy there? That would be Sunday that the whole world has been deceived by. Notice carefully, next article on the screen. This says from the record, October 24th, 2020. Notice the headline. Catholics, I like the what again? 
Levin in the loaf of Ewan's work says Glendon. The pillars, notice carefully, the pillars of the United Nations overlap the tenets of Catholic social teaching and from the inception of the UN in 1945, the church has encouraged the international organization while simultaneously reproving it when it drifts from its lofty goals. The nuncio said the Pope envisioned the organization, that would be the UN organization, would adhere to the what? The principles of solidarity, subsidiarity, and the what? The common good. The UN foundation, pillars of their foundation, is based on what? Or are based on what? The teaching of the Roman Catholic, the leaven, as we just read of the Roman Catholic. Now the parable that Jesus mentioned of the leaven, that represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. When it comes to someone and that person accept the gospel, accept that ease, it spreads through the life and it transforms this person from a sinful mortal creature to the righteousness, to the lightness, to the image of Jesus Christ. Similarly, we see this counterfeit here, the leaven, the teachings of the papacy. This is what the UN, the United Nations, their foundation is based on the teaching and principle of the Roman Catholic Church. Notice, back to the screen, the article goes on to tell us, Mary Ann Glendon, former U.S. ambassador to the Holy See, trace the Catholic influence on the UN's central document, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was adapted in 1948. Archbishop Cassia said, the four establishing pillars of the UN overlap with Catholic and social teaching. There are deep convergences and sympathies between the goals of the UN and the work of the Catholic Church. Now question, where is the headquarter of the United Nations? Where do we find it? Within the United States of America. That would be New York City, to be precise. What did the Bible say about the second beast, United States of America? It is that power, the Bible tells us, that will lead the world to worship the first beast. Revelation chapter 13 can begin in verse 11 there, all the way down to verse 17. So we see the foundation of the United Nations, which has the headquarter in the United States of America. They are promoting what now? The common good according to the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. Notice this here. This is from a website called UK Media Uploads Files, Climate Change and the Common Good. That's the PDF format there. Notice what it says. Climate Change and the Common Good, a statement of the problem and the demand for transformative solutions. The Pontifical Academy of Sciences and the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences. This is straight from the Vatican, because it says the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. That's the Vatican. Notice, back to the screen. It tells us here, the Catholic Church, working with the leadership of other religions, can now take a decisive role by mobilizing public opinion and public funds to meet the energy needs of the poorest 3 billion people, thus allowing them to prepare for the challenges of unavoidable climate and ecosystem changes. Such a bold and humanitarian action by the world's religions, notice world religions, acting in unison is certain to catalyze a public debate over how we can integrate societal choices as prioritized under what again? 
UN, that's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, into Sustainable Economic Development Pathways for the 21st Century with projected population of 10 billion or more. Now we see all the religions as well coming together with the United Nations to promote what? Catholic social teaching under the umbrella of climate change. Notice it goes on to tell us the climate change is a global problem whose solution will depend on our stepping beyond national affiliations and coming what now? Together for what reason? For the common good. Notice it tells us here that we must get rid of national affiliations. Remember, the common good, as the Pope says, has become global. It has to be universal. That means you cannot pledge allegiance to a country. You have to pledge allegiance to Rome, which is, or the Catholic Church, which is universal, right? That's what the word Catholic means. You cannot say, well, I'm going to pledge allegiance to my country because that's what that's where I was born. No, according to the new normal, which we are experiencing right now, you have to pledge allegiance to the Pope of Rome. Why? Because he gave us the solution to the climate problem. Laudato Si, back to the screen. Notice, such transformational changes in attitudes will help foster the necessary institutional reforms and technological innovations for providing the energy sources that have negligible effect on global climate, atmospheric pollution, and ecosystems, thus protecting generations yet to be born. Religious institutions can and should take the lead in bringing about that change in attitude towards creation. Keep in mind again, this is ecumenism here. This is interfaith movement here. They are all working for the papacy. You've heard of one world religion, right? Notice on the screen what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Review on Herald, September 17, 1901. This time is right upon us. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth when the angel of mercy folds her wings and departs. Satan will do the evil deeds he was long wished to do. Storm and tempest, war and bloodshed, in these things he delights, and thus he gathers in his harvest, and so completely will men be deceived by him that they will declare that these calamities are the result of the, what? Desecration of the first day of the week, that would be Sunday, from the pulpits of the popular churches will be heard the statement that the world is being punished. Why? Because Sunday is not honored as it should be. Well, we are seeing the fulfillment of this. The religions, the churches are on board with the Pope Laudato Si, the solution for the climate problem. Notice next article here. This tells us from AZ, that's Arizona Central. Headline, faith communities urge voters to cast their ballots with climate in mind. October 25th, 2020, the panelists included speakers from the Jewish, Muslim, notice, and evangelical traditions and was moderated by the Reverend Doug Bland, the director of Arizona, again, Interfaith, Power and Light, a group that represents 100 congregations across the state, including, notice, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, and indigenous spiritual traditions. The groups see the 2020 election as a referendum on the values that will shape our future and have developed a non-bipartisan voting guide for people of faith. The religions, again, are coming together to do what? To promote Laudato Si, Sunday sacredness. 
And we were told that the Sunday law will come to us as well through popular demand. We are seeing this as well. Notice carefully, goes on to tell us, their work reflects a trend of religious groups working to educate followers about environmental issues and human-driven climate change. The movement within the Christian community was spurred by who? By Pope Francis 2015 encyclical on ecology called Laudato Si, which says climate change is real and mainly a result of human activity. So we see all the religions again, Islam, the Buddhists, the Jews, all of them are coming together, the indigenous spiritual groups, they are all coming together, the UN, the head of states, as Revelation chapter 16 tells us, the three unclean spirits like frogs, they will all come together to fight against God. Let's continue. Article goes on to tell us, I have people in my congregation who say, how could a Christian vote for Biden? And I have people in my congregation say, how could a Christian vote for Trump? Gonzalez said, our faith, the gospel notice of Jesus, is not partisan, but it is what? Political. Our faith isn't Republican or Democrat, but notice, the common good matters because God cares about his creation and his people. The common good what? Matters. Who's been calling for this common good Sunday law? The Pope of Rome, whose teaching is this? Well, that is the Roman Catholic teaching. Notice, who gave the world again? This yeast, this leaven, as Jesus mentioned. It is the Pope of Rome, which is a child of the papacy. That would be Sunday law. Back to the screen. Next article from Reno Gazette Journal. This says, wildfires, the pandemic, and the what again, and the coming good, the recent challenges of the pandemic, and rampant wildfires are examples of disasters calling for collective action as a society. And they have something in what? In common. Both are much more difficult to cope with once they grow beyond, notice now, certain bounds. So the pandemic, COVID-19, and the climate change, they said they are at the same level. We must tackle them now the same way they are tackling the pandemic right now. And how are they doing this? Lockdowns, remember, rest, year of jubilee. Notice, back to the screen, article goes on to tell us, challenges like the pandemic, wildfires, and climate change requires, notice, collective effort to solve and can help, what's the word there? Unite us as a country if we organize collectively for what reason for the common good as notice the reference there saint francis of assisi said it is in the giving that we receive let's pause who was the quote-unquote saint francis of assisi again it was the same quote-unquote saint that inspired or at least the pope was inspired by to give the world the solution, Laudato Si, and even his recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti. Do you see where we are, brothers and sisters? Everybody, as Fratelli Tutti has called us, are coming together, fraternity, unite together for the common good. Back to the screen. It goes on to tell us, many have found that their life became most meaningful and fulfilling through service to others. As these regional and global challenges increase, so also will opportunities for serving the what? The common good. What is the common good again? It is the Sunday law, which is Catholic social teaching. Next one, notice from Vatican News, October 25th, 2020. COVID, a sustainable future is possible if governance changes. Pope Francis is certain of this and is repeating it to everyone. We will emerge either better or what else? 
worse after the pandemic. The global crisis requires that the parameters of human coexistence be rethought through the lens of what? Solidarity. Based on this foundational idea, the COVID-19 building a healthier future has been created in collaboration with the Decastery for promoting integral human development to offer a vision that might lead to the, notice now, beginning of a what? New fraternity after the pandemic. Are we seeing or are we hearing an echo here? Fratelli Tutti, Laudato Si are being implementing today. Not only the leaders, the head of states, have been implementing them throughout this year as a result of the pandemic, but now the religions of the world are sounding the alarm because of climate change and referring people back to Laudato Si, back to the screen. Article goes on to tell us, some people will say that the fight against climate change only involves environmentalists. Pope Francis in where again? What's the reference? Laudato Si affirms that the climate is a what? Common good and therefore an issue that touches everyone. Are governments aware of this? Who is saying this? The religions. We need to let the government, in case they are not aware of this, we need to point them, let them know, hey, five years ago, the Pope already gave us the solution to the climate change problem. Watch carefully. Janet Ranganathan. Yes, in fact, most things that matter to humanity, there's a strong link to the environment. First, economic growth isn't a goal, it's a means. The goal should be sustainable development for all. I don't think so. They both share similar root causes and need to be tackled together. They're not solutions unless they're actually implemented. The problem is that we're not tackling the root causes. We're not understanding the barriers to adoption. Safeguarding our home has to be everyone's business. Can you feel the vibration of the rumbling of the Roman army? Now, Jesus told us very clearly, if we want to know how soon his return will be, look at the signs of the times. There will be many signs, he says. Can we see that the abomination of desolation, the Sunday law is here? Notice, back to the screen. Next article from the Catholic News Agency, October 25th, 2020. Pope Francis prays for, what's the word? Peace and justice in Nigeria. Pope Francis appealed for an end to violence in Nigeria after reciting the Angelus Sunday, speaking from a window overlooking St. Peter's Square, October 25th. The Pope said he prayed that peace would be restored through the, how? Through the promotion of justice and what else? And the coming good. Wait, let's pause. Do we understand uh, what we just read here? The only way peace, remember, peace has been a theme this month as a result of Pratele Tutti and also the recent Pope Francis interfaith meeting, No One Is Saved Alone, and also the latest publication, Global Compact on Education. Peace has been the theme, come together. That's the only way we can have peace. But here we are told that the way we will have peace is by what? Keeping Sunday for the coming good. Notice again, let's read that. It says the Pope said he prayed that peace would be restored. How will peace be restored? 
through the promotion of justice and what else? And the coming good. We pray to the Lord that all forms of violence will always be avoided in the constant search for social harmony through the promotion of justice and what else? And the common good. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, when they are calling for peace, as the Bible says, and safety, sudden destruction is coming. And Daniel 8 verse 25 tells us, by peace, the papacy shall destroy many. And that is the leaven of the papacy there, the Sunday law, the common good, the peace. Notice on the screen what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here, volume 14 of manuscript releases, page 91. As Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, issued a decree that all would not bow down and worship this image should be killed. So a proclamation will be made that all who will not reverence the Sunday institution will be punished with imprisonment and death. Then notice, let all read carefully the 13th chapter of Revelation, for it concerns every human agent, great and small. Let us take heed, because the signs are all around us. The yeast of the papacy, that leaven of the papacy, has spread throughout the whole world now. They are ready to enact fully the Sunday law. They are ready to enforce the Sunday law. We need to hide under the shadow of the Almighty. We need to run to the rock of our salvation. Go to Isaiah chapter 26 with me. Isaiah chapter 26. Notice what Isaiah tells us here, beginning in verse 17. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 17. The Bible says, Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery, is in pain, and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. This is the world today. The world is about to give birth. It is in labor right now. Just like according to Revelation chapter 12, we were given the same description, a woman who was ready to give birth to which child? That was Jesus Christ, first advent. The signs of the times are telling us that we are seeing the birth pangs of the earth. The last crisis will come upon us, but ultimately Christ will come again. Notice it tells us in verse 18, we have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise, awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. What a day that will be! Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. The indignation there is referring to the seven last plagues that God will send upon the wicked because they have exalted the laws of men above the laws of God and uh, they would go after to persecute God's people, then God will send in the seven last plagues. So God says to his people, Come now, my people, enter thou into the chambers and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place, for what reason? To punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. What a day that will be. We are here, brothers and sisters. 
Jesus is coming again, that's for sure, because we can see it, though we do not know the day or the hour, but as the song says, as Jesus says, the signs are foretelling us that the second coming is indeed imminent. Let's pray. Lord God, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for not letting us in the dark to be clueless when it comes to what's taking place in our world and also when it comes to the second coming. Help us, Lord, to take heed as we can see the last day events are being fulfilled so rapidly. Lord, we pray that you will forgive us, cleanse us, hide us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.